Father, I love you so much. We all love you. We're here to just dive into your word and just dissect everything and learn the truths that we need to apply to this life, Father. We've taught so many lies and taught to go this way and that way, and they're all they all lead to destruction. The world doesn't know what they're talking about, Father, but your word is a light into our, our feet and a light into our lives. So, Father, I pray in Jesus' name that you please light the way for us today, Father, through this text, through what we're about to study, through every single thing that, that's uttered in this room, Father. Have your way, O oh Lord. Give us the strength that we need, Father, to not just accomplish wonders, Father, but to to bring you so much glory on this earth that people can't help but to bow their knees and give you glory, Father, and magnify your name, be a part of your kingdom for what we do, Father, for you, because of our love for you, Father. Have your way in this room, Father, and just I pray. Oh, and give me the strength, Father. I need strength. Oh, my goodness. So, please. Oh, I feel strength coming right now. <laughs> give me strength, because I don't have any right now. And just take me out of the equation, Father, and you speak through us, each and every one of us, and speak through me, Father. Just have your way, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. So, like I said, the text is Matthew 5, 13 through 16. You guys are very familiar with it. So we'll go ahead and turn to it now. I did it before at Elevation Church, and uh, I did it for my e-group there. And I only did it because it was a transgender I saw at a streetlight intersection one time. And I'm at this. I'm at the intersection, and y'all know the two the two yellow lines that divide the road. So it's a one-way street, but you know it's two different sides, right? And this transgender is just in the uh, on the walking on the yellow line at the intersection down uh, uptown. Because instead of downtown in Charlotte, North Carolina, they call it uptown. So this transgender is just walking down this yellow line, knocking on everybody's window, saying, you know, she she wasn't just <coughs> she wasn't just knocking just to knock. She was knocking to like you know for sexual reasons, and you could tell it was for sexual reasons, right? She was a prostitute. Yeah, and so I'm on. Yeah, okay. Thanks for that baby in it. So, so I'm just on a, I'm on a phone and I'm in a, I'm on a conference call. This is when I work for Bank of America, so for corporate. And literally, I'm talking. So I'm presenting something. I'm talking, and she comes and knocks on my window. Hey, 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 hey! Just like, and I'm just like, dude, yo, shut up! I'm on the phone. Obviously, I'm on the phone and I'm having like a full fledged conversation. And <laughs> she, she just kept on going, and like. But the whole point of it is, like, when I first initially saw her, I was, like, disgusted. Not just that, like, I had, like, it wasn't even disgust. It was, like, hatred. And I looked at her, and I was like, you should be a gym to yourself. You should be a gym. As soon as I drove off, it only took a second. God was like, Sean, what would I have done in that situation? If I was put in the same situation in your life right then and there, what would I have done? So that's the point of this lesson today. Like he literally told me this passage when that happened. So, I mean, I mean, y'all can answer that question if you want, but I think we should just go ahead and go to the text. But somebody wants to read it for us, Matthew five thirteen through sixteen. Yeah. Man. All right. You are the salt of the earth, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it's, it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. What do y'all think about that text? Like, what comes to your mind firsthand? I mean, I know I've talked about this, like, bringing it up and hinted at it with uh, other lessons I did and everything, so makes me think of a couple of verses. The first one is like Jesus says, either be hot or cold, don't be lukewarm. Yeah. So this is definitely like, don't be apathetic. That was something I was talking with a friend yesterday was um, when we talked to international students, some of them, some of them will read books on like skepticism and how good skepticism is. And it's, it's healthy to have a little bit of skepticism, but being skeptical and apathetic seems to be very popular now for whatever reason. Okay. But like if you, like if you're cold all the time and you have nothing, if you like skeptic of everything, what do you have left? Right. And the other verse I thought of was, um, I think it's Second Corinthians, um, uh, 
For we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus uh, to do good works, with which God prepared in advance for us to do. So we're actually made, not only do we not need to be apathetic, we're also made to be like a um, hot, like he, Jesus wants us hot or cold, yeah. but we were made to actually be hot. Okay. So yeah. same thing with the uh, salt and the light, like they were made with a purpose to either add taste to something or to shed light on something. We weren't made. We weren't made with a purpose just to hide it. Okay. And I was gonna ask you guys, like, do you feel like salt and light of the world? Do you taste like the best salt ever? Do you shine like the brightest light, the brightest star? I'm so tired. Y'all can tell. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do y'all think about those questions? I'm sure everybody feels that way about themselves. You think so? If you don't think yourself is great, not gonna go very far. Okay. And I have to admit, though, like, uh, when I'm with, like, my obviously non-Christian friends, not to say anything mean about them, but when I get in conversations that I, like, talking bad about somebody we know, mm -hmm. like, I usually just don't say anything. It's like, man, I don't know how, what God would do in this situation, or how can I be light in this situation. Okay. So I usually just don't say anything, which I guess is better than joining in, but... Mm -hmm. And in those situations, I definitely don't feel like the light, unfortunately. Okay. Those situations are hard, though. I think yeah. we've all been in that situation. I know for me personally, I don't say anything that's negative about the person. Mm -hmm. Saying certain stuff that you don't agree with is speaking negatively. But it's just... I don't know. Um, what I thought about is how, like, we a star is a star, like, it doesn't have to do anything to be a star mm -hmm. and the same way with salt like it is salt and so even in those situations when you don't think you're shiny like that's just who you are naturally and I feel like sometimes we think that we have to do a lot but sometimes just our presence or our lack of like it, I, it doesn't take a lot I guess is what I'm trying to say because salt is salt and so you can instantly tell the difference from seasoned food than unseasoned food, it's the same way. Like it doesn't take a lot. Um, and sometimes you put a lot of salt, it just takes completely away from the food. So it doesn't okay. take a lot. Yeah. Sometimes. All right. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go in on it. There's so many stuff with this lesson. And when I say that, I really, really mean it. Like, I feel like that's, I always say that with every lesson I do. But salt has 14,000 different functionalities. You think we're going to get to all 14,000 tonight? Can we even, if it's even possible, like, you know, then you can't even count how many light sources that there are. There's different light sources. You got the sun, you got flashlights, you got stars, you got lamps and fluorescent lights, you got lasers. There's all different, uh, headlights, there's all different kind of light sources, right? So. You're definitely not going to be able to talk about all the lights. So, uh, what do you mean? But you got to look at it from that context. Like, the setting is Jesus was, this is a sermon on the mount. So, Matthew 5, 6, and 7 is Jesus. It, it's known as his, like, greatest, uh, what are you going to call it, discussion or teaching. Everybody knows the, the, those, that's the sermon on the mount. And what amazes me, it was at the Sea of Galilee. I think, Gal I know Galilee was an agricultural place, so like they were really good with, it was a great temperature there, and I knew that the fruit grew really fast, I think, and it ripened perfectly, so that's what I heard, and I also heard that trees grew there, or something like that, but that's beside the point. I think Galilee was a place of, it was a Gentile place though, it was a mixture of Gentiles and Jews, so I know the Jews looked down upon Galilee. Am I wrong? Do you know anything about that? No. Oh, okay. I, yeah, so I think we should figure that out, but I, I'm pretty He's sure. He's looked down on a lot of people, though, so. Yeah, I mean, Probably but, and, and they looked down at Galilee like that. I know that for sure, so, but I know, like, the Sea of Galilee was a very popular place to go fishing, if not the most popular, but a lot of storms happened on the sea. That's where the storm happened when Jesus calmed the storm with the disciples, but, again, that's beside the point. It just amazes me that Jesus was talking to these people. On, on a hill at the Sea of Galilee and it's not just it wasn't the religious people it wasn't the holy people it was 
regular people that people the religious people and holy people and people that knew God looked down upon and God uh, Jesus looked at them and said you are the salt and light of the world and he didn't just say that you are, you are he said that you know you don't have to be you don't he didn't say that you might be the salt and light of the world he didn't say you could be the salt and light of the world he said you already are so it's just something you naturally are already but like I want to look at Matthew 5 1 through 12 before we go any further because like this is crazy so I'm just gonna read it all right it says now when Jesus saw the crowds he came up on the mountainside and sat down his disciples came to him and he began to teach them he said blessed are the poor in spirit for there's the kingdom of heaven blessed are those who mourn for they will be comforted blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness for they will be filled blessed are the merciful for they shall be shown mercy blessed are the pure in spirit of pure in spirit for they will see God blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called the children of God blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness for theirs is the kingdom of heaven blessed are you when people insult you persecute you and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me rejoice and be glad because great is your reward in heaven for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you that was powerful because these are the people who are being oppressed. And Jesus was saying, you guys are the salt and light of the world. We don't feel like salt and light. <laughs> like, you know? like, and salt and light were essentials to that. It's essentials to life even today. Could you imagine living today without salt? You die because your body can't survive without salt. Either. See, that's powerful right there. So 14,000 different functionalities right there. That's one. So like, but could you imagine life without salt? Would you... Can you eat a potato without salt or an egg? Does it taste good? Like, I never tasted an egg unless you put cheese in it. But I never tasted a, a potato without salt. Like, a, it's just too bitter, sour. It's bland. It's lame. It's pathetic. Like, you know, like, you don't eat certain, certain food you can't eat without salt. Right? And uh, what was I talking about before that? But anyways, yeah, both of these two things are essential to life. Can you imagine life without light at all? You know how many times people, people would stub their toes on stuff? See, both of these two things are two critical things that you need for life. And this is what Jesus said you are. You are the salt and light of the world. Oh my gosh, man. And we even broke it down yet. You know what I mean? See, salt... Back in that time period, they didn't have, I, I keep on saying it, but back in that time period, they did not have refrigerators. So how the heck are they going to keep their stuff from decaying and dying and getting bacteria and fungus on it? They had to put salt on it. They literally got different plants from the sea, because I mean, most seas are filled with salt, right? But he got, they got plants that were in the sea, pulled it out, and were rubbing on the meat and everything so that their food would stop from decaying. So just like us, so like, we're going to break every single functionality of salt and light and how this should relate to you. Because you are the salt and light of the world, right? So like, Jesus said that, uh, so we're decay and everything, preserve, right? So we got that image. So we're, we're preservers of the earth. Because if, if that's a functionality for salt, that means we preserve the earth. We preserve the earth from destruction. So if Christians around and Christians still here, we preserve the earth from decay and from full the full wrath of God coming down upon it. And it's really easy to see. Because just imagine if Christianity didn't exist at all. There's no morality then. You know, just imagine if, if Christianity didn't exist, there would be no truth. We're preservers of truth. So, like, because we speak out, because we're not going with the grain, we won't allow injustice and just idiotic things to happen. And we got to stand up for what's right, no matter what the cost. And God's calling us to that. We're preserving the earth, you know, from the full out decay. Y'all see that? Like, do y'all agree with that? I really just went off track with what I was talking about. But the whole point of me doing this lesson is because, that, so I'm going to retract because I need to make sure I say all this. Like, I've been talking to some of you guys and some of you guys don't know what your purpose is. And, uh, I mean, but if you know what your purpose is, what is your purpose? Helping people. Helping people? Okay. All right. Anybody else? What's your purpose here on earth? Working 
it's a fail for me. Okay. Anybody else? And it, the, this is why I did the lesson. Because when you don't know your purpose, you kind of abuse things. So you abuse relationships. If you don't have a purpose for the relationship that you're in, you're going to abuse that relationship. See, some of us has either been the abused or we've done the abusing in a relationship. Am I wrong? So <laughs> if, uh, I mean, what was another example I had? Y'all can help me out if you want. If you don't know your purpose to life, you abuse your life. So you go to the wrong places, you do the wrong things, because you don't know your purpose. And you don't really care to know sometimes. And we see that every day, right? And so I remember uh, when you don't know your purpose as well. So like that's like, I, I posted this the other day. I've seen this quote for a, lot, a long time. A ship in harbor is safe, but that is not what ships are built for, right? A ship in the harbor is just going to rust away. It's just going to decay. It's going to decay either way. But put it, just send it down for it to do nothing, it's going to decay even faster, right? So, like, when I was a kid, I got a CD player. And I had, the first CD I ever got was Battery Boys. And my older brother got NSYNC. So this is our first albums we ever listened to or anything. Vine used to listen to NSYNC all the time and just be like, bye, 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 life. And I was like, man, I want an NSYNC CD, man. That sounds way better than, you know, my battery's low. I, I just got to go. I'm going to a place nearby. You know, <laughs> so like, you know, I feel like his CD was way better. But like NSYNC and Bastard Boys are the same. So I grew to like Bastard Boys as well as NSYNC. But that's beside the point. Like, I had the CD player, though. And like... You know, I be seeing DJs do the <laughs> fresh, like just playing around with the disc and everything. That's what I did with my CD player. I would just be like, you know, playing with the CD, <laughs> like I'm like a DJ. You wanna know what? <laughs> you wanna know what happened in that CD? Right, it scratched out. It could not work. Why? Because I abused its functionality. That was not what the intent of a CD is in a CD player. You don't scratch it like a you know, DJ set, you know, and same with this thing. If you don't know the functionality of a chair and how to use a chair and you don't know what this is and you go through life, like just imagine this being your life, right? This is my life, it's a chair. You know the purpose of a chair, but you don't know the purpose of a chair because you don't know your purpose, right? So you look at it and you think it's a toy and all you do with this is this. Is this gonna break if you just keep on spinning it because you think it's a toy, right? And that's all you do with it. You just do this all the time. Y'all think it's going to sustain for a long time? I think I'm breaking it now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's what some of us do in our lives, not knowing our purpose. And this text is really talking about your purpose, man. It's saying why you're here on this earth. And, oh, uh, yeah, so I'm going to look at verse uh, 13 again. Uh, it says, you are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. So the whole point of this lesson is I feel like the church, the church altogether has lost its saltiness. And if you guys disagree, please speak up for me. I mean, speak out. Because I only say that, and the only reason why I'm doing this lesson is because literally it said in this verse right here, it says, but if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It is no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. If you guys, you guys like salt on your food, right? So you have, if I put a salt all on my laptop right now, just put salt all right here. It's all good tasting salt. If I have a batch of bad tasting salt that has no taste, no flavor at all, it's just salt. Like, you know, it's not even salt. It's alt, you know, like so whatever salt that ain't salty anymore, right? And I mix it in with the salt with flavor. And then I hand it to you and say, here you go. Here goes the salt you want. Do you want that batch of salt? Why not? Because it's uh, diluted. It's not as much taste as pure salt. Okay. And it messes up the flavor, right? So it's not the same. So like Jesus literally said, it's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled under the foot. The church today... A lot of Christians today, they're being stepped on. They're being abused. They're being taken advantage of. Christians are speaking up and saying, believe in Christ. There was a guy in, in Charlotte, North Carolina. I still hear his, hear his voice today. Me and my roommate always make fun of him. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this was really with him every single day. Jesus saves. Jesus saves. And he may be all uptown. He's uptown, and he just yells that out all day. And you can hear him from blocks away. Just blocks. 
I'm not saying anything's wrong with what he's doing. All I'm saying is, you know, Chris, we, there's a stereotype about Christians going on. And so many Christians don't have the flavor that they need to reach others. You know, and uh, not only that, they're, it's like everything that they say, nobody believes. Why? Because they don't practice what they preach. They act holier and thou and act like they got it all together and they are perfect. When everybody knows, nobody's perfect. So just because you're not being transparent and vulnerable and not, you know, being honest with yourself and others, is anybody going to listen to you? You know what I'm saying? Then, not only that, you're being trampled on and forgotten. Christianity is being forgotten. and Nobody cares to know God in the Bible. Why? Because nobody, even Christians don't know the Bible. You can't quote three scripture verses without looking at it. You don't even know how to go to the text. So how are you going to talk about something you don't know? And so this is the whole point of the lesson. Like, I'm talking about purpose here. This is Jesus literally said, this is your purpose. You're the salt and light of the world. And I'm going to go into the functionalities in a minute. But the whole point of why I did that is, is because knowing who you are allows you to become what you are. And God's purpose for you is to make a difference. And if you don't know that, how are you going to do anything? I still remember I asked my dad when I was like 12 or 11 probably. I was really young. I said, Dad, how do I know my purpose? And my dad said, if you spend time with the Creator, you figure out why you're created. And I still remember that today. And because I went to Jesus. See, look, I'm going to read another verse for you guys. Matthew 16, 13 through 20. All right? And then I'm going to ask you guys some questions. Uh, it's, this is when, uh, I'm just going to read it. When Jesus came to the region of Caesar, Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. But what about you, he asked. Who do you say I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. Alright, I should not have read all of that. I should have stopped. But my whole point is, it is good to know other people's testimony about God, but you need to have one for yourself. When you spend time with the Creator, you forgot why you created it. Like I said, you'll know God for yourself. And that's the whole point of this text right here and what I just read. You can't base your faith on what your parents think, what other people think, what you hear. Most of the people in your uh, environment or from your hometown think, you got to stay on your own faith. You got to be able to say who God is for yourself. Because real recognizes real. And if you don't really have faith in God, it's, everybody's going to be able to sift you out. They're going to be able to tell. And that's the problem. A lot of Christians today, so-called Christians, I'm not going to call them real Christians because they're not. So-called Christians, they proclaim to have this salt and light. They proclaim to have this word and this gospel. And they go out and try to reach other people. And they ain't never been reached by Jesus. And it's pathetic. Like, it pisses me off. Like, this is, you're making us look bad. And the thing is, does one grain of salt do anything when you put it in food? You just, I want to put salt on my food. And you get one little grain of salt and you just put it on your food. It's not going to do anything. So you're one grain of salt. It takes all of us to make flavor. You know what I'm saying? Like, it just in the context, okay? So, <laughs> so like, it takes all of us to make flavor, right? So if one of us are off, is offline, if one of us ain't living right, if one of us ain't really knowing the Bible and we speaking out about God, and we try, you, you get what I'm saying. You making all of us look bad. And it's kind of like drumline. One band, one sound, you know? <laughs> a, a band does not sound good if everybody's off note and off beat. I still remember Vaughn, he used to play in a band in the middle school. It was the worst band I ever heard in my life. Like, this band director had hair, literally. Her hair went down to her shin. Yeah, it, it was curly like the movie Brave. It was ridiculous. She had orange hair like Brave, and she couldn't direct at all. I could do a better job than her, and I was like eight. But anyways. She's directing the band. Everybody, like it's the worst noise ever. Everybody's off beat. And so, yeah, okay. So, all right, there's so many ways I can go with this lesson. So what do you guys think so, so far? So far as working, so application-wise, as far as like a bunch of salt coming together to give it flavor, Okay. how would you propose like we all work together in conjunction like that in real life? Mm -hmm. 
like the analogy is good that makes sense you yeah. need a bunch of salt to make something to preserve the food or to give it taste but mm -hmm. how do you propose we do that like this group or different groups how will we work together for to give real life that play i'm gonna let you guys answer that what do y'all think i think we have to i think the most important thing is to be transparent like, mm. you can't just preach Jesus to a person but not be truthful about, you know, how you were at when you, before you met Jesus or yeah. just any example that you can give them along with whatever you're sharing with them. I think it'll be a better connection of hopefully bring them to Christ but okay. just be transparent basically. You know, honestly with everything we talk about, we're gonna break that down. Like, what I'm about to go at. Right. Were, were you going to say something? Yeah, I was about to say, it's the same thing she said. It's just one way we can do it. What we're doing now in a setting like this, podcast is coming up big, and you do that. Just sharing ideas and info of one another to make each other better, to be able to distribute it out everywhere else. Yeah. Iron Sharp is Iron. You with other believers or people of the, of the same mindset. It helps sharpen everyone around, everyone around you. And then once that ha once that foundation is established, now you can go out. But you have to be right within yourself first yeah. before you even get to a setting like this. Mm -hmm. Not even here. Here you can build that mm -hmm. while building yourself. You put everything together. Now branch out. Let the cycle repeat itself. Right. It's like letting money grow in the bank. You if you just put it in the bank. It's not gonna grow very much because the interest on it's not very high. If you sh if you invest in stocks, bonds real estate, whatever, your money's going to double because interest is higher. The more people you have around you, the more info you get, the, more, the better you get, the more de deliberate in the information you receive you get. So it's and the whole point what I was saying, man, you can only influence others as much as Jesus has influenced you. And uh, if you don't ever spend time with Jesus, it's going to show. And you make them fool people for a while. And this is where I was going to go at. So you got salt, right? How many substances look like salt? But it ain't salt. I can name one. Sugar. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, sometimes, have you ever put sugar on your food thinking it was salt? Yep. I have one time. You know what I'm saying? And it doesn't taste good. You know? <laughs> and that's how some, I'm not going to say Christians, little phonies, they be at their sugar and spice. And they ain't nice, nothing nice. And, and they're trying to act like salt. And they're making us look bad. So you can, that's what I'm, see, you see where I'm going at? There's so many different analogies. But like, let's like talk about the different functionalities of salt and like to answer your question. Cause like there's a plethora of ways of how we could affect change and really preach the, you know, cause the thing is, okay, I'm just gonna go in, man. I'm gonna talk about light. So, Jesus literally said, we're the light of the world. I'm breaking this down now. Y'all ready? All right, so Jesus said, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Oh my gosh. That's so powerful, man. Light. Jesus said, you're the light of the world. You can't put light any and everywhere. Can't we just imagine if we did a complete opposite of what we do with light. Imagine we put all the light in the ceiling on the ground. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to be able to see nobody's faces, first of all. So, because tables be on the ground, chairs be on the ground, everything be on the ground. And rugs be on the ground. So, what's that going to do? Make our feet look good, probably. And now we're barely going to be able to see that. You know what I'm saying? Our feet will be shining at the bottom. You know, so that's not the meaning of light. So, Jesus literally said, uh, you don't put a light underneath the bushel. You don't put a light underneath a bed, underneath the table. No, you put it on a lampstand. So each and every one of us have been positioned in our lives in a specific place. You got black hair, you're fat, you're skinny, you're white, you're black, you're smart, you're... I'm not going to say dumb. But you know, but you're all these things for a reason. So you can reach the people in your vicinity that you come into contact with. And each and every one of us have something special about us. And if you don't spend time with the Creator, you're not going to know what makes you special. What makes you stick out. This is the whole point of the lesson. In order to... I was going to ask, like, how do you obtain this salt? But you're already salt. So it's really how do you stir up this salt that's in you? How do you keep it flavorful? How do you make it more flavorful? What do you do 
to reach other people because it ain't just about you it's about serving you know and you can't serve others if you ain't served yourself if you ain't got 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 right with God you know real recognize real again so like God positioned you in a certain place in a certain arena in your sphere for a reason and if you don't figure out what that reason is you're not gonna be as effective as you should be you know and uh, yeah and hiding your life why do you possibly why would you ever hide your life for affirmation Okay, I should just let y'all answer that question. But you hide your light, you know, because you're scared of what other people think. You hide your light because you're just too different than everybody else, which is what I always did. You hide your light to blend in, to fit in. Light can never fit in with nothing. When darkness is around, the world is darkness, right? That's what the Bible says. So, and we're the light of the world. So when we come in the room, what should happen? You know what I'm saying? Like, and I was gonna ask you guys, like, who's the most influential person you ever met? The most influential Christian? Who's a person that's really salt and light that you have a great representation of? If you, if it ain't anybody, that's fine. You can say that. But like, is there, is there a person, an image that you have, like, of who that person is? You know what I mean? Like, who's the most saltiest individual you ever met? And you're like, man, like this person's ridiculous. Or is it you? Is it you? <laughs> <laughs> You said, Dad, <laughs> why? What makes them stick out? What makes them salty? Sure. We like, well, we similar to him, but we raise different. Mm -hmm. Everything he's taught us. He ain't been wrong on a lot of stuff. He's not perfect, but he ain't. Yeah. He ain't been wrong on a lot of stuff. He practice what he preach. Okay. And then there's plenty of other people, too, that we know of. All right. Good Remember. Mommy, good daddy. Yeah. Grandma, grandpa. Okay. Who else? What y'all got? And the only reason why I ask that question is because, like, yeah, I was going to ask you guys, like, do people know that you're a Christian? Can people tell that you're different? You know? And if they can't, like, that's a problem. Like, if I ask anybody in your workplace, in your house, because this is where it really matters, in your own home, if people in your household can't say that you affected their lives or, t you know, led them to Christ or anything like that, have you done your job? Like, you know, the people closest to you. And that's what salt is. Salt, it gets to know substances. It comes into contact with it. It meshes in it. It becomes one with the substance. Salt is so good and powerful, it don't just become one with it. You can't even see it anymore when you put it in on the substance. Am I wrong? It just blends in. It sticks in right there. And this is what God called you, the salt and light of world. I'm about to tear it up, man. You're so, <laughs> as salt, when you come into contact with other people, because right now I'm coming into contact with you, we should be, you should get to know people so well and show them God's love so well that they, they want to get to know you. And you're, you're trying to get to know them because you're salt. Salt gets to know the substance. Salt don't, when you put salt down on something, it doesn't say, no, that me, that me, you know, and then it, it says, I'm not going to stick to it. No, when it's finally stuck to the substance, it's stuck. And like Jesus said, you know, you're of the world, but you're not in it. You know, be separate from the world, but not in it. And like as Christians, we're called to be in the world. So literally, I'm in heaven. I'm sitting down from heaven right now. And my feet's dag dangling down from the world. I should always be, you know, C Colossians chapter 3, verse 1 through 3. Verse 1 says, set your mind on spiritual things and not earthly things. So you're supposed to always have that heavenly mindset. You're supposed to always be reaching for spiritual things and storing up treasures in heaven. You're not supposed to be focused on the things in this world. And that's why I read, I know I'm going everywhere, man, but I'm about to like really break it down. I'm trying to. But like that's why I read the Beatitudes, man. It says, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are those who are meek, who are humble. Man, these people, don't. does that sound like you? Are you a humble person or are you prideful? Are you a person that seek justice and seek what's right for other people and seek just peace? Man, blessed are the peacemakers for they will inherit the earth, man. Blessed are the pure in heart for they will see God. So like as Christians, man, we're so humble. We want what's best for other people. We want, we want God's work to be done. And this verse is literally saying, you know, you may be poor in spirit, but the kingdom of heaven is yours. Man, you may mourn, you will be comforted by God. You know, you may, you may be meek, you may be humble. You will inherit the earth. Remember, for God says, you know, I humble the proud, but I give grace to the humble. James 4.10, I think. But anyway, yeah, it is. So, so yeah, so, uh, 
Yeah, y'all get that. So like, Jesus said this, remember, he's on a hill and he's talking to oh, people that's being oppressed. People that, people are take, being taken advantage of and people that are, you know, they want better for life. Like, this is wrong. And Jesus said, you guys, man, y'all will inherit the kingdom. Because God, he resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. And, uh, okay, you guys get what I'm saying. But anyways, going back with, when you come into contact with other people, so what I should do with that transgender person? You guys already know the answer to that question now. When I come into contact with somebody I don't like, I don't approve, I don't approve of their lifestyle, or anything, what would Jesus have done in that situation? And this is where religious people, holy rollers, people in the church are failing. They literally look at people and just judge them and, oh, you little sinner, you know, you're just, you're going to hell. Is that what we're called to do? Based on this text, when salt comes into substance, it's coming into contact with a substance, we're called to bring out the best in that relationship. We're called to, to really make that relationship, bring, bring out the best flavor in that connection. I don't care who the person is. That's what Jesus did. Am I wrong? That's why the religious leaders said, why are you always with tax collectors? Why are you always with sinners? Why are you with them? You should be with us, the holy people. If you're really God, right? No. <laughs> you know, so, all right. Y'all get that though? The blending. I had a lot of questions, but like, so you know how doctors, like, they have to wash their hands before they do surgery? Why did they do that? Sterilize. 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 Okay, what if they do it a little bit, like, and they don't do it completely? What happens? Okay. So just a little compromise and just a little, being a little self righteous, a little prideful, doing a little penny of sin in public or private can get you in trouble. And this is what happens. This is what it's talking about with salt. Salt can't just blend in with anything. How can salt lose its flavor? That's a good question. I don't think salt can really lose its flavor, but I think if it's involved in the wrong environment and put in the wrong substance, like I'm pretty sure if you put salt in dirt and then you pick up all the particles of salt from the dirt and wash it with water and try to use the salt, you think it's gonna be salty? And that's the whole point of like this lesson, man. Like, Salt can't just be used for any and everything. It can't go just any and everywhere. It has to be separate. It is a delicate source, and you are a delicate source. So like, you know, I was gonna ask you guys, are you pure? You know, cause salt is white. Don't let, if you're white, don't let this get to your head. It's only one white person here right now. <laughs> but you know, white is a, that color signifies purity. I don't know if you guys knew that. And so you're the, salt is white, right? So if salt, is, God is really saying you're supposed to be pure. You're supposed to be holy. You're supposed to be in the world but not of it. You're called for something better, right? So, yeah, I was gonna ask you guys, are you pure? Or do you contaminate your life? Uh, what is contaminating your life that keeps you from being salt? What hinders you from making an impact in the lives you come across? You want me to ask that again? Yes. Okay, are you salt? I mean, <laughs> are you pure? Are you pure? And what it, what is the, uh, what is the contamination in your life that keeps you from being salt? And what hinders you from making an impact in the lives of those you come across? I think sometimes it's because uh, I'm a people pleaser. I let mm -hmm. fear control my life of what other people might think about. Okay. All right. like perfect love is supposed to drive out fear, but I let that fear be a driving force a lot of times. And to answer that first question, nobody's pure. Okay. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. All right. So Jesus. be perfect, you gotta be perfect. Nobody's perfect. Yeah. Jesus, Jesus was. Yeah. Nobody else will be now. Okay. I don't care how much you strive for it, you ain't gonna never reach it. Yeah. You try, never get there. Yeah. Okay. It's like the people who say after they're saved, they don't sin. Right. 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 You, you, just, you just sin right there by saying Yeah. Right. And you can shout, you pure all you want to. People who know you, they can tell by your body language what you're doing to them. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, what you were saying about uh, being transparent—that's like a—that's what a—that's like a big part, though. Like, yeah. if you pretend you—if you pretend you're pure, people are gonna see that, or they're gonna catch up pretty quickly. But if you're transparent about how you're also a sinner, I think more people are can connect to that, though. Right. Instead of putting yourself on a pedestal that where people can't reach it. Yeah. A dog can't hide his tricks. Can't do it. 
Yeah. Try all you want to, you can't do it. Yeah. Player can't have his tricks. Oh, they always come back to life. I was about to say, the dog is the first non-sport analogy you made. <laughs> then you made it a sport analogy. <laughs> Alright. You know, uh, I'm bringing back that point too. Like, what pisses me off, I don't know if it pisses you guys off. You know how Jehovah Witnesses come to your door? Yeah. They try to witness to you? Yeah. How does that make you feel? Does it offend you at all? Or you understand, no. like, okay. I really like, your opinion, cool. Right. I can relate to, like, um, man, I got approached by Mormons a lot. Yeah. Which is a weird thing to say, but, yeah, they swarmed me. Um, I don't know why. But part of me thinks, man, that's, like, good dedication to, like, <laughs> one, to spread God's word. Mm -hmm. Or, like, to be on a two-year mission. Yeah. Right. Okay. Though part of me is, like, man, I wish... They didn't have like added, of course. Like I thought, man, it's too bad. Like their opinions are so different from mine. Yeah. So it's kind of a mixed feeling. Okay. It can be irritating though, especially like if they knock on your door and tell them you're a Christian, but they try to force yeah. with their message to you. I don't like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like when I'm with this one, talking about. Like when I'm with especially. If, go ahead. Oh, you're good. You're good. Go ahead. If you're willing to listen to them, like yeah. sometimes I'm like, oh, I don't know. Time, yeah. well, I'm gonna listen this time, yeah. but then they take advantage of that. Yeah. yeah, before I forget, I'm, you come after me, okay? But like, there's a thing called too much salt, right? You can put too much salt on food. Y'all ever done it before and salt. tasted it yeah. and had to eat salt. it? Yeah, okay. So, like, when it comes to that, can Christians be too salty? Yes, yeah. yes, and that's the whole point. That's where I was going at. So, this is salt, I and mean, you're the salt in the world, you can be too much salt. A lot of Christians are. Well, so called Christians. What happens when there's too much light? Right. And that's what I'm saying. So, like, you can't beat your Bible on people say, you need to get this. You can't, uh, you can't force things down people's throats because you don't like when somebody do that with you. Yeah. And this is how I think about it. That's why I asked that question. Does a Jehovah Witness or somebody try to witness to you offend you? Like, does it make you mad? It makes me mad. Because, like, you ain't done nothing to get to know me. One. Two, you coming up to me like you know me and telling me something I already know. Three, you know nothing about me. I'm a pastor. So you trying to preach to me, it's offensive. And those are the three things. So like, I look at other people like that. I try to reach them and I ain't done nothing to get to know them. Which a lot of evangelism is today. Which I don't agree with because Jesus didn't do that. Jesus literally knew who he was going to. Got to know him and spent time with him. And that's what salt does. It 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 ingrates itself and integrates into things and gets to know the substance. And if you're not doing that when you're trying to evangelize and trying to reach people, you ain't fulfilling your purpose. Oh, and the title of the lesson, man, was uh, "Are you being who you were created to be?" I should have started. We're like saying. an hour into this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Are you being who you created to be? You know. And like God called you to salt and light of the world, man. So like, too much salt or too little salt. Like some of us get too little salt. You know, it, it ain't enough flavor, man. It, I don't even think I really like painted a good picture. When you don't put salt on something, it's really like bitter. It tastes awful. You don't like it. And that's how some Christians are. They're dull. They have no life. They're lifeless. Pathetic. You talk about something you don't know. So when you're talking about it, it's just like, ugh. You know what? <laughs> um, you made a really good point, and it happened to me recently. Um, I think we've all kind of touched on being transparent and yeah. how, like, when you are something, it's not something that you have to like go out of the way to be. Yeah. And so, like, um, in the summertime, we have like summer workers, and these this one particular girl has been around because she she used to be a part of the program. Now she's like a summer worker. Yeah. And so she feels comfortable talking to me she doesn't come up and ask me questions about God but she just feels comfortable talking to me about certain things and so when you have that like you said about Jesus that was really important when someone when you've been transparent with people and shown them like I'm human I'm I'm a person just like you that open like they're drawn to your transparency they're not drawn to your perfection they're drawn to that 
you're like you being you. Right. And I feel like that has a lot to do with it. Like you said, you can be too salty. If I go around talking about G, like literally everywhere that my mouth is a scripture, like with the Jehovah Witnesses when they come yeah. up to you, I don't have a conversation like that on a daily basis with right. people. But it's just me being myself and that that's what that's what draws people to to your life. It's not it's not like necessarily quoting scriptures or reading yeah. the Bible over them. But like I said, it's just who you are. It's your mm-hmm. testimony. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And that's what I, that's the whole point. So like one of the functionalities of light, man. There's different light sources, right? A star can't be a firework. A firework can't be a fluorescent light. A fluorescent light can't be a light bulb. So God called you to be a specific type of light. You don't know what that light is. You gotta spend time with him to figure out what it is. But we're all supposed to be a great attraction. So no matter what environment you enter, your presence should be recognized. Like I said, you should be like fireworks. Like people literally go to see fireworks because of the lights. It looks pretty, right? This is what people should think about you, right? Am I wrong? Then like New York City, the city of lights. Is that what that city's called, I think? Yes. So like, it's a beautiful, especially y'all flown before. You look down and you see all the city of lights anywhere. Nashville got a lot of lights, a lot more lights than what you think. And it looks great, it looks beautiful. You're like, man, I didn't know Nashville had that many lights. It looks amazing. That's how people should look at you. You're such a beautiful soul. You know, I love the way you act and just the way you carry yourself, the way you speak. It should be an attraction to others. And uh, also, you know, light, is a, it brings energy. Light brings warmth. <laughs> what else does light do? Y'all can help me out if you think about anything. Like it, it, it literally gives us, like, happiness. Like, people okay. in uh, darker parts of the world are yeah. actually st- statistically sadder than people who have more sunlight. Right. Yeah, there's a thing, like... It's, it might sound funny, but it's a whole thing like with, like if people are going through depression, they have this like actual light that they can sit in front of because like he was saying like the darker they they connect like sunlight and um, darkness with light. Yep. But Suicide rates are higher up in Seattle, Washington, or like those more rainy, darker areas. Yeah, they attribute a little of that to the uh, amount of or the less amount of light that they receive. Okay. And I was also going to say, light dispels darkness. It casts it away. Do you do that with people? That's a real good question, too. Because light reveals the truth. It shows the way. One of my favorite scripture verses is Proverbs 4, 18 through 19. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. The way of the righteous is like the... Well, I'm not going to start off with that one. It says the way... No, I'm going to start off. Cause that's how it goes. Verse 18. The way of the righteous is like the sun. Shining brighter and brighter until midday. Brighter and brighter. It gets better and better. Uh, Proverbs 4, 18 through 19. And then verse 19 says, But the way of the wicked is like the darkest gloom. They don't know what causes them to stumble. Oh my gosh, man. <laughs> You're light of the world. This is what light does. The way of the righteous is like the sun shining brighter and brighter until midday. Y'all know how the sun rises. It didn't say it stops at midday. No, it said it, it, it goes until midday. You know, so <laughs> like the, at this highest peak, the sun casts out all shadows, supposedly, right? It goes everywhere. So there's no darkness anywhere, right? So all truths revealed. It is seen. Where every obstacle, where every uh, hurdle, where everything is, so you can permeate and go through life and maneuver however you need to maneuver. This is how your life should be to other people. You're the light of the world. You should show a way to other people. You should show people the way. And not only that, you should show people the way to where like, they're like, man, you know, how did you make this decision? Why did you make this decision? Why did you go this way? You're so different. I would never do anything like that. So what led you to do that? You know, what light? What is this light? You know what I mean? Like, that's how people should act with you. And if, they don't, if they're not doing that, it is completely obvious too, like, there's a complete contrast between light and darkness, right? It's as different as day and night. If people should be able to see you like that. There's no excuse. There's, there's no excuse for light and darkness, right? And then uh, also, I'm just going to go to it while I'm thinking about it. So, you got the sun and you got the moon, right? You're scientific. You can help me out. The sun is the sun. It's the light. The moon reflects the light of the sun, right? So, you can help me out if you think about anything else. But we're the moon. 
God's the son. And no pun intended. Son and son. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm so corny. <laughs> but yeah. And then also with light, man. So light does a lot of stuff. It stimulates sight, reveals the truth. Uh, you can help you see clearly. What do you say? It said attracts. It tracks? Attracts. Attracts, okay. All right, so I'm done with light. I yeah, I, I find it interesting because like a lot of people will equate um, equate like light and dark like they're two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. But really, light's a lot more powerful too. Like light can dispel darkness, but you can't like shine a dark light to get rid of light or anything. Yeah. I, I don't even know what you would call that. But, mm -hmm. but like you can't like shed darkness on light to get rid of it. Darkness yeah. is just there and it runs away when you shine a light on it. Right. And that's how we it's should be with truth. Powerful. Like, you should come with, this is the whole point of life. You should come with so much facts when you talk that people are stupefied by what you say. Like, oh my gosh. I have nothing to say. Huh? So that's how I feel every Stupefied. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Like, but that's how we should be, though. And like, uh, dang, I forgot where it's going to go. That's how I feel. Yeah. But like, that's the whole point, though. Like, we preserve truth. We're the only ones keeping the world from decay and from really going with foolish thinking. And that's like the whole point of my ministry, man. Like, it's really to humble people. It's all common sense. You can't disagree with common sense unless you don't have common sense. And now everybody wears deodorant, so they stink. So that's okay. But anyways, uh, I already talked about too much salt, too little salt. What makes... Okay, that's what I was going to ask you guys. What makes you stand out? What makes you different? What makes you something that other people can't match. Let me make sure I read that right. What is something that you have that other people cannot match? Yeah. They're not you. Okay. You want us to be specific? Yeah, yeah. This is all you. Not nobody else. This is what makes you the salt and light of the world. Because remember, we're all salt and light. You don't have to try to be it. We don't we're not all the same light source. That's what I was gonna say. Like there's different light sources. Some of us are trying to be a light bulb, and we're just a laser. Be the best laser you can freaking be. Like, you know, otherwise, you're going to miss your call. And that was the whole point. So, like, my whole life, I've always tried to make my weaknesses into strengths. Always. I felt like if I make my weaknesses into strengths, I'll be perfect. I'll be holy. Yay. But if I live all my life to be like that, will I accomplish it? No, or is there a better way? Huh? Just focusing on yourself. You know, focus on making better men of others. Okay, and just, but so like y'all get that right? So imagine if I just live my whole entire life to make my strengths even to to even more strengths to make it even stronger. What my life will look like? You think I'd be worried about my weaknesses? Or my weaknesses be cast away a little bit? Or my weaknesses will probably turn into strengths because I turn those strengths even even more strengths. It's kind of like the parable with the. Five talents, the three talents, and the one talent. The one that hid that talent. So they tried to make their weaknesses and the strength by hiding that one talent, the one thing they had. But the people with the five talents and the three talents, they tried to maximize it, and they did. And they got five more from the master, three more from the, well, two more from the master. So we're the same way. Y'all get what I'm saying? So y'all want to answer that question, though? No, the yin and yang is that what you just said, though. Okay. Like, you focus your whole life on making your weaknesses your strength. There's a yin and a yang. One, there's a push pull. One got to come. Your one of those strengths got to come out. Yeah. One of those strengths turn to a weakness because you focus on that weakness. Yeah. Because you losing focus on what you're already good at. Mm -hmm. And then the thing about strengths is, say you're in a group and we did a podcast together. Say you're not good at talking for an hour and a half, two hours. You need other people around you to help cope and be able to swing the conversation completely. Yeah. And that way you're not talking the whole time, he's not talking the whole time, he's not talking. You gotta be able to have people around you that can swing it to cope for your weaknesses. Okay. If you focus on your weaknesses all the time by yourself, your strengths become weaker and weaker every single time. So if you focus on a weakness for 50 years, you you have a few 50, 50 years in debt on your strength. Okay. I don't think it's like that in all cases. Not all, not all cases. But. Yeah, I'm not saying all cases, I'm just saying like, yeah. with what God's called you to be, focus on that. And that's all you need to focus on. Because you can't focus on every ladder. You, you know, focus yeah. On one ladder at a time. Go to the next one. Because if you build up the wrong ladder, that one ladder that matters, everything's no important. Because mm -hmm. like it goes back to this verse too, like the the text, like uh, 
Matthew 5, verse 16. In the same, Jesus said, in the same way, let your light so shine before men, man. He didn't say let it shine. He said let it so shine. Oh my gosh, that's so powerful. Let me see. Woo, hit that sting, boy. Uh, <clears throat> that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. So let your light so shine. How do you make your light so shine? Well, going you, back to, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. Um, when we were talking about strength and strengths and weaknesses, the scripture, um, my strength is made perfect in weakness. Like, mm -hmm. that's deep because we all have those weaknesses. But, like, if God's strength is made perfect in my weakness, like, that's huge. Right. And so it, said, it goes on to say, like, I'll glor I will glory in my infirmities. And so when you get to that point, it kind of all ties together. When I get to the point where I can glory in my infirmities, then yeah. it's not necessarily a weakness anymore. Okay. Like, I mean, it is, but I'm just looking at it differently. Yeah. All right. And then I, I haven't even, like, went where I want to go yet. I want to just go ahead and go to Saul. This is why we did the lesson. This is about to crap on everything I just did because this was what I should have started off with. 14,000 different functionalities of salt, right? What happens when you swim in the ocean water? And have you ever swam in salt water and you had a cut on you or a wound? Stink. Mm -hmm. Okay, but have you done it before? I haven't. No. How bad does it sting? Mm -hmm. Depends on yeah, how big you cut it. It kills, yeah, it kills <laughs> all the bacteria, yeah, so it's right. stinky. It hurts. Think of so it like bad. alcohol. Yeah. Okay. It hurts. <laughs> I mean, I, I did it before. Miss Robin had yeah. a salt. It depends well, on how big the cut is, too. Yeah. But even if it's small, man, that thing feel like a whole ocean when it's that little. Because I had a little bitty, itty bitty one. And when it hit my skin, I mean, I was only like, I had to have been 10 or 11. When it hit me, I was like, ah! Ah! <laughs> it was like my whole body bowed down to that. Like, it was awful. But anyways, so salt stings, right? So there, there's open wounds out in the world. Everybody has open wounds. Everybody has insecurities. Everybody's struggling with something, right? So when a Christian comes in the room, oh my gosh, you're salt, right? Well, whatever they're going through, they should just break down and cry. <laughs> I'm struggling. Just because they know it's you. You're salt of the world. Just, they're swimming in your pool. They're in your arena. They came up to you. <laughs> you know? Especially if they know you. And you have been letting your light so shine. And that's what I was going to ask. You know, what are the good works that God's been doing through you? That people been saying like, man, because you did this, man, oh my gosh, man, you blessed my soul. It, has anybody ever said that to you? What are the good works that you've been doing? And this is what I mean. Everybody is in a different field. Everybody, none of us are, are in the same environment. None of us have the same parents. None of us have the same major. We all are in different arenas and different careers. So we're all different light sources. So what are your good works? What God's called you to do? How do you need to shine your light? What do you, what position do you need to be in? That's a lot of questions, but. One of the thing, good thing about like is coaching. Why coaching? Kids need help just because some of them are smart. Kids are smart in general, but some of them are just they got it. Some of them they need help, like. And a lot of it's based off environment because their ceiling can only go so far, and you can only—they can only—they only, only want to learn so much because of what they're accustomed to. Mm -hmm. And you can somebody—it takes a certain person to be able to reach that person, like, and whether they listen to you or not, mm -hmm. it's just like Dad said about Terry Lee. He's that one, one who listened. He thought his ministry was in vain, but one listened. So it's just kind of, for me, it's like, and it's, it's just messaging to kids that life is already hard. Mm. <clears throat> Don't make it that much harder. Because aside from the fact that it's already hard, if you do the right things, yeah, crap happens, but it's not that hard. Yeah. If you do what you're supposed to do, mm. if you keep doing status quo and fall on the wide road, guess what happens? Set, you just fall even farther back and down the rabbit hole. Mm -hmm doing the same old thing. And you don't change it. You don't become Michael, people like Michael Jordan. You don't become Elon Musk. You don't become Bill Gates. You don't become whoever God called you to be. And you don't maximize your talent, your gift, and your purpose. Okay. What you want to do. But 
like we've been talking about, to get to that point, you have to be the salt yeah. for everybody else. But you have to be master you before you can shake the salt everywhere else. See, yeah, but you just said, well, you turned the boy, you still stop. So <laughs> I must say, pass the salt, like pass the torch. You get your light and your salt, right? I was going to end the lesson like this, but I'm just going to do it now. So pass the torch, man. Everybody has have a, everybody has, so, you can't do the Christian life by yourself. You have had to have been influenced, taught. Like my good day, I always said the Christ, Christianity, the Holy Spirit, is it's not taught, it's caught. It's caught, not taught. Yeah, it's caught, not taught. That's so like, yeah, it's powerful, right? Y'all got it? So like, somebody had to have been running their race to pass the baton to you. Somebody had to have the match lit, and then they lit yours. Somebody have had to have salt in their little, uh, What's it called? Salt shaker. Like yin yang twins. Salt shaker. I'm changing it up. With the salt shaker. And they pour some salt in your, into yours. That's how Christianity is. Are you passing the salt? Are you lighting the uh, match in other people? Are you, you pass passing the torch if you ain't running your race? Okay, and that's what I'm saying. So, like, and that's why I asked the question, like, what are your good works? What is your flavor? How do you taste? What are you doing with your life? What is, this is your purpose. Like, anybody who asks what, they don't know what the purpose is or anything like that. This is your purpose. This is what you need to figure out. And it's already said, it's been said right now. You're the, you are called to be this effective, this dynamic, this powerful in people's lives. And until you believe that, if you don't know who you are, you can't be who you are. Ooh, that's powerful. That was by myself. That's Sean Jenkins' quote right there. But anyways, <laughs> I'm gonna keep on going. John John remembers. He had a football game on a certain day when he was in Pee Wee, and he, this is when he played for Old Hickory, and it was at least 106 degrees or 110. It was hot. No, I played for Old Hickory. Okay, well he played Old Hickory. He was in Mount Juliet, right? And it was just hot. I still remember my outfit. I had a Kobe Bryant gold shirt on. It's 81 point shirt. And I had on some white shorts, and it had black and gold lines on it, and it just it was just three of them. I oh man, it was so perfect. Like, and I had my Kobe Bryant song. My it was black with purple and gold on it. Perfect, right? And you know it's hot outside. I never wear shorts. I never show skin. It's so hot after show skin today, and I'm just like dying. And I said, Mom, Mom, I'm hungry. I'm hungry. And she kept on putting me off, like, you'll be fine. No, mom, I mean it. I need some food. And I normally always do this work, but I meant it this time. I was like, mom, I don't feel good. I need water really bad. I need money. And she just kept on, like, pushing me away, pushing me away. This is what she get. I went up to the concession stand, and I'm up there. And I'm up there for at least six minutes, maybe even ten. And I'm just waiting, looking at these pathetic people of life just talking the whole time. And I'm dying. I need water. I need water now. And I can't say it because I'm just so weak. And this is how much God loves me, man. I literally, like, fainted backwards and was about to pass out. And somebody caught me. And nobody was behind me. Nobody at all. Nobody. And somebody was just miraculously behind me and caught me. A little trust fall. And then next thing you know, they dragged me to a bench. <laughs> like, I'm on my feet, though, you know, because they're strong. I'm just dragged to a bench. They said, call the ambulance, call the ambulance. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> call the ambulance. And so then, uh, I still remember the ambulance comes and everything. They said, keep him awake. It was a nurse right there already, like before the ambulance even came. She was there. She said, you have to stay awake. If you don't stay awake, your system can shut down and you'll die. You could die possibly. Don't go to sleep. Uh, I was so tired. My mom and dad came over there so fast. I don't know if they... How they knew it was me. Right, that showed you, Mom. Right. And I did. I said, I said to her, I said, this is what you get. When I said, I'm hungry and thirsty. <laughs> I'm mean, Mom. It's so sad to that day. <laughs> oh, I let her have it, man. And so anyway, my mom and dad came over there so fast. My mom tried to keep me awake. I'm about to be knocked out. Like, oh, my gosh. Like, if you ever get to the point where you're about to die, don't go to sleep. Try to stay awake. It's fair warning. Because it's so hard to stay awake. My dad literally came over there and was like, hey, boy, stay awake. Yes, sir. Oh, I was wide awake now. I was like, yes, sir. <laughs> and that's how it is with God. But anyways, uh, that's, I'll tell that another time. But that's what salt does. You know what I ate before the game? That whole night I had sunflower seeds. No water. 
the whole night, then the whole morning, I had sunflower seeds. It's about thing about too much salt drinking when you don't drink water with it. Mm -hmm. Right. You don't have a sauce. You don't have a solvent. Mm hmm And that's kind of like the Bible and everything, but that's, we'll talk about that some other time. But that's what that happened. I got thirsty. And when people come around you, you should make them thirst for something. You're a sunflower seed. You should be killing. I'm not killing people, but you know, you, you should be. Uh, Hold on, Earth. <laughs> yeah, I was about to say, I'm, I'm not sure what direction this analogy is going. <laughs> no, but seriously. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. But no, they, they, they're dying right now in the world. And they need to realize that they're dying. The only, the only way they can realize that they're dying is when they come into contact with salt. And they keep on drinking it. You. you have, remember, I had a lot of sunflower seeds. I kept on eating salt. And because I kept on eating salt, I almost died. I had a heat stroke. So, <laughs> yeah, they should realize the need for help, and they should want help, and they should seek healing to you, you know, through you. Why? Because you know who to go to. Jesus, man. So, we are the salt. God brings the healing. All right, man. That's that's my lesson, though. What y'all what y'all think, though? It's a good lesson. Do y'all remember some of the questions, or y'all want me to ask some of them again? And y'all... Because one my biggest question I was at, trying to ask you guys is, is like, how can you be better at being salt and light of the world? Or do you think you're doing a great job? That goes back to your question. That's the big question. One of the big questions you're asking mm -hmm. is, are you pure? What was it, what was it? Yeah, are you pure? Are you pure? A lot of those, no. You can strive for it, a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Being naturally just pure, no blemishes, no nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. Now, your strengths can outweigh your weaknesses, but at the end of the day, no way is perfect. It's yeah. always going to go back to that middle ground. Mm -hmm. And I was going to ask you, I don't think I've said this that much, but I was going to ask you, you know, are you hiding your light? Have you been worried about what other people think and allowing them to keep you from being who you really are? Because that's so sad, man. Like, God has called each and every single one of us. We're all salt and light of the world, man. So just just imagine withholding light. from. It just imagine the whole world's darkness, which it is. Just close your eyes, picture darkness. And you're the only light source that can help light the way for people. Are you hiding your light from other people? And if you are, man, what can you do about that? Why are you hiding it? You know, are you... Are you Worry about what other people think. You're trying to seek other people's approval. Or you're trying to fit in and be darkness when you're light and you can't be. Like, this is a problem. You know? And so that's why I did the lesson, man. You guys are way more powerful than you, what you think. And the only reason why you are, like uh, Ashley said, is because of God. God lives inside you. He's abiding in you. And you need to unleash that power, unleash that fire to the world because they need it. You know? And that's why I'm doing this lesson. Because I still remember when I asked my dad, what's my purpose? He ain't know. He can't give me the answer. Only God can. And he said, go to God. And when I went to God and he told me what my purpose is, this is it. And you, until you see yourself the way you should see yourself and the way that you actually are, you can't be who God called you to be. And so that's why I did the lesson, man. Like, it's just too important. You, you're presented with so many opportunities to preach the gospel, to reach other people, to, 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 to man really make an impact and are you being who you were created to be are you influencing others you know or, or other people influencing you because it shouldn't be like that and like I, I'm just going to keep on man I got one more thing man my greatest I was going to ask you guys at the very beginning of lessons have, you, have God I think I asked you guys before for another lesson has God ever used you to save another soul I mean you don't do the soul saving but have God ever used you to proclaim his name and lead that person to him and they're still living for him today because that's the greatest joy ever and I still remember my freshman year there was this guy Theodore DeAndre Nicholson and I've been telling uh, Maya about him man he was a work of art like I mean he was a work Ooh. he was a lot to work with like he was my roommate he were in track with me and like literally every single day he always debated with me about the Bible every single day because that's all I did. People would come in the track team in my room and all they see 
all they would tell me is, Sean, it looked like heaven in here. Because, like, I would have my lamps just shining down on my bed. And it's all shining down on my Bible. And I did it unintentionally. Like, I'm just reading my Bible in the dark. But it's all light on my way. And people would be like, man, Sean, like, dang, like, it's so freaking bright in here. So I feel like I'm, I'm in God's presence. Like, and, and so Theo, anytime he saw me reading the Bible, which was every single day because I hated track. I hated the track team. I need to be with God. And that's all they saw me do every day. I'm reading my Bible. I didn't care what they thought. I just needed to spend time with God. And I'm reading Christian books, listening to sermons, taking notes. And people would just come in. And I'm being completely upfront with you guys. I just got done masturbating. Somebody would come and be like, Sean, man, I need prayer. I'm not in a state to pray for you right now. I'm thinking to myself now. But, you know, so people would come to me like flies, like bees, man. Sean, man, I need you. I got a question about the Bible. I got a question about God. Man, tell me about God and Theo. Man, anytime he had a question, I, he was my roommate, so he would talk to me all night to three in the morning. I already stayed up late enough, and he would talk to me debating about the Bible and about God. Like I don't believe it, and I told every single time and every time I told Theo, man, I said I see God, what God's doing through you and what He's trying to do. So I said, man, you're gonna be, you're gonna be something one day, man. God's gonna use you. Every day I told him that, huh? Right, every day, every day. And so then I still remember, man, he drove me crazy too. I just need to say this before I say anything else. Every time he woke up, I'm not a morning person, but every time he woke up, he would just be like, Woo! Just like that, would yell and clap his hand as hard as he can. You ever met somebody that can really clap? That was him. He'd be like, Woo! Every morning! I'm like, Theo! Dang, man, shut up! <laughs> then, I, every time I woke up, we had waste every day, either at 4 a.m. or 5 a.m. At uh, well, Monday, Wednesdays, and Fridays for track, and he literally would always have Playhouse Disney on, cause he would go to sleep with Disney Channel on. He'd leave the TV on, so I gotta listen to Playhouse Disney, all Mickey Mouse. I don't even know what those stupid they look so dumb. Just bad, and annoying music every every morning. Like I, you see how much I'm, it agitates me now. Then he used to oh, no, I'm going to hell because I wrote everything down. Then he used to always slam every cabinet, every door he opened. Some refrigerators on my side. Oh, my head hurts now. Uh, microwaves on my side, and he would just slam every door he opened. So it's on my side. He would just be slam the microwave. Woo! <laughs> it was so annoying. Oh my gosh. And some, every once in a while, he told me to stop doing it, but I it, at least two times or three times, like I bought everything up and would just explode on him. I'd be like, look, Theo, you need to stop slamming cabinets. You need to stop coming to my side on, every single time you come out the shower to wipe your daggone feet on my rug. I'm tired of it. Every time you get out the shower, you just come over my side. He's tired. <laughs> every time you to wipe off his feet. Like, <laughs> Cause it was wet, but oh, it pissed me off. But anyways, woo. So anyways, you see how much he drove me crazy, right? He literally texted me. It was like July 17th or 7th, something like that, in 2012. He texted me and said, "Sean, man, it was a Sunday. I got out of church, looked at my little flip phone, unflipped it to see the messages, cause I still had flip phone then. And I'm walking out. I'm at the porch right there. And Theo texted me saying, "Sean, man, I want to thank you for every conversation we ever had." Literally, the pastor literally talked about everything we ever talked about. And it all made sense. I gave my life to Christ today. And because of it, the light that God used for your life, I committed my life to Christ. That was the greatest thing I could ever hear, man. I, I couldn't believe it. I was, on, I was losing hope with Theo. <laughs> but man, you, you should see him now, man. Like, you know, I ask you guys, who's the most influential person you ever met? Two people, Theo and Duval, man. I already told, Theo got energy, man. Like, he, he told me one time, you know, like, when God uses you to save another soul, it's kind of like, you know, the pyramid schemes and everything like that they got going on to get money? He said it's kind of like that because, like, you know, one person, you know, they, they get another person in on the scheme, and then, I'm not saying Christianity is a scheme or anything, but they get one person in on the scheme, and then that person get, like, ten people in on the scheme. So that one person that got this, that got that one person, he only got one person, but really he got like 11 people, right? Because he got that one person, that one person got 10. So it doesn't matter what you do with the rest of your life, you got that one person. And how many people they reach, that's how many people you reach. That's the power of light, you know, passing the torch, lighting matches. If you light a whole row of matches, what's going to happen? 
if you just got one match lit, they're all gonna, it's a domino effect, right? So like, it's the same with us. Like, guys called you to be light and salt of the world, man. Theo, man, like his energy, he's just like me. Like a spit image with my, my faith and everything. Like, he literally talks like me, it's scary. Like when I see him, I'm like, man, shine. Like, you know? <laughs> but like, his energy is completely different. When he comes in the room, like he has games, he has chance. It's just his energy. I can't match that. That's not my life. I'm not called to be like that. But that's him. That's Theo. So what is your life, you know? And then Duval Young. Oh my gosh. Wait, before you will say, this is the last thing I'm saying, I promise. Duval Young, man. The biggest guy ever. You know Duval? Yeah, okay. Oh my gosh. Duval was ridiculous, man. Like, he told me before he was saved, he used to walk up in a club. You know, he's a big guy. And the whole club would move. Just to be a one big old path for him to walk. He's like, yeah, move up over. You know, because that's the presence he had. And it's even now, he's saved now. So now when he comes in the room, people don't just move out the way. They're like, man, dude. Like, you know, they all hype. It's like a certain energy level comes up. And that's what Duval brings to the table. He just, he comes, he has quotes. Like, anytime I was hanging out with him in college, like, I spent a lot of hours hanging out with him. He would just ask me a question about a quote he saw, you know, and, he, and then he was like, like, this is a quote I got memorized. So that's why I'm so big with quotes now, because of him. Like, he was ridiculous, man. Oh my gosh, like, like his light shined just so bright, man. And yeah, man, he used to always wear Christianity clothing. So I got a hat. He gave me a little winter hat. It says, not of the world. And that's the kind of stuff he wears. He wears Christianity clothing that's just like fire, that makes him stick out. And like, so like, yeah. Be who God called you to be. What's your light? I mean, shine your light as, so shine your light so that men can see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. That's the point of the lesson. Man. Be the salt and light that God called you to be. Have as much flavor as possible you could possibly have. Because we all don't have the same amount of flavor. Some of us are saltier than others, and that's fine. You know? But be who God called you to be. So, like, yeah, that was the point of the lesson, man. Like, I hope you guys enjoyed it, man. I really do. Like, I know I started off slow because I'm tired. I got a little energy though. Picked up. Yeah. You woke up. You woke up. He said, "Yeah." Yeah. But what you guys think though?